Well, I want to do a little intro on this video before we get started on this HWH job I just did. Uh, one thing I was trying to figure out is the correct naming of this mechanism. So the best that I've been able to figure out, I believe Winnebago calls this a Stormore. Um, you have the Stormore standard. This is what we just got done. This is what this video was about. I've done two or three videos already on what they call the Winnebago Stormore flat floor, where the mechanism runs out and drops down level. Uh, but if you look over here, so here's the same mechanism. This is called, Winnebago calls this mechanism. If you've been under your RV, you see this pipe comes out in these plastic pieces like this right here, the ones that break sometimes. Well, when, well, HWH calls this mechanism HWH Space Maker. And I believe, if I'm correct, Winnebago calls the very same thing Store More Flat Floor. Store More Flat Floor. Jeez, tongue twister, isn't it? Um, but then what we were just repaired was just the Store More Standard because you just go straight out, straight back, where the Store More Flat Floor runs out and drops down level, which has that more crazy complicated mechanism we have to sometimes deal with. So I believe that is correct. If I'm not, someone can straighten me out. What else I wanted to point out to you that I've discovered. Oh, yeah, let me see here. Okay, next thing I want to point out, this is the kit we installed, the RAP91975. And there's the components you, you get with it. But something confused me, and uh, I, here's a copy of the instructions. I went over these instructions several times and you'll notice if you get this same kit you may see you have white bearings and you may have some black ones these nylon bearings like they refer to I call them slides but I think they refer to them as bearings as yeah, bearing pad kit but in this kit that that we received I had two whites and two black ones on these little bottom small, small pieces here and nowhere in the instructions did it say anything about the difference, what to use, what not to use. So I went back with the white ones because that's what came out of it. And they lasted 20 years. So after I got the job done, I called HWH to find out what the scoop was. And they told me that I think the way they said they're going to discontinue the black ones. They tried a different material for a while, but the customers are complaining that it makes they make a lot more noise. Whatever this black material is. Now, I don't know if it's designed to last longer. I mean, the white ones did 20 years. That's pretty dang good. Uh, but evidently, the material they chose with the black ones, uh, they're getting a lot of customer complaints. So I believe, I believe he told me, uh, in future kits, you may no, no longer see the black options. But if you have a kit and has black black or white bearings, uh, well, actually, I did, I did a picture. Hang on, where's my photograph? Oh, here it is. That's a better, better example. So I opened up that kit. I took a picture of it because I was confused. I didn't know exactly what to use. But there's a black one and white ones, and the black ones I believe are going away. But uh, but these evidently the material in it made a lot of squeaking, a lot of extra noise, and so I think they've discontinued and just stayed with the white ones. And this is the instructions we use for this particular one. Where is the number? Yeah, that's it. That's the PDF file. If you Google, Google it. Because it, it tells you this is the one that's got this slotted uh, slotted for sliding compartment support bolts. You'll notice that in the video as I'm doing it. It's got this slot in the, in the bottom of the tube where, where there's a, a big bolt that slides back and forth through there that, that supports the storage compartments down below. And there's kind of a cutaway of uh, what we're replacing. And usually these here fail. And on this project, this piece was missing. It had fell out and was gone. Uh, these and this was chewed up really bad. I'm gonna show you a, a picture of why. You'll notice in my video, I, I pulled out this pad. It had a big gouge in it. Well, I had a large gouge in it because this bolt. And I didn't point this out very well in the video, but you see this bolt. It looks like it's loose. You see that big shadow? It's not. It's all the way tight. Uh, and, and you got a, one of these bolts on each side. It's kind of an odd-looking shaped bolt. But that tightens the ram, uh, the hydraulic ram, to this tube. And then it pulls it in and out of the big metal tube, the big black one. Uh, and what had happened at some point in time, you'll see in the video a lot of stuff is bent and damaged. I'm believing maybe uh, maybe a hydraulic line may have failed at some point in time and the room racked. And when it did, it kind of dished this all in, bent it. 
and so when it when it did that it made this bolt stick out and it was digging into that side bearing so we modified that bolt where it was nice and smooth and we're not drag anymore and right here you see a big gouge I remember pointing that gouge out so this slide mechanism had had a, a rough life uh, previously but we got it all took care of oh and that piece I'm talking about you'll see I have one I pointed out one of these it had a great big gouge in it where that bolt had had rammed into it two or three times and chewed it all up so something you want you might want to check on yours make sure those bolts are good and tight if that thing comes loose that make it wall out that hole it'd be a real, real mess so um keep that snug but anyways I don't, I don't think i see anything else i needed to point out specifically but um because i was just sitting there editing the editing this video video i did notice luckily on this one i didn't draw no blood usually every time i get into these projects i'm always knocking a knuckle on something but did pretty good on this one no no blood in by the end of it but that'll get you started i think you'll enjoy that it was a nice little project we got it all leveled up and doing real good now so on with the show well it's late at night and guess what we're going to do we're going to work on our rv hwh this time the uh plastic pieces are beginning to break the paint lines are getting out of alignment i'm trying to zoom in there you go can you see the broken pieces and they're just trying to focus all right there's the broken parts i'm gonna climb under there and we're gonna start taking things loose and see gonna see what it takes to fix it and then we'll do some adjustments too because we need to make some adjustments here to get the paint lines back where they belong Let's crawl under there. Door closed. Okay, so now now we're under the RV. Trying to get you a close-up shot of these broken pieces. Something else I noticed is you can see some wear marks here. But that piece is gone. Oh, hang on. Let me flip the camera over. Okay, if I flip the camera over here, you see there's a big gap. We're missing the slide piece over there. Because on this one, you got... Got what well, they call them, refer to them as I guess they're nylon bearings. So we got two there, got one on top, then on the other side too, somewhere in this area. So uh, let's try to find out where the other one went to. So I got to poking around and I see, my, you can see a little bit of white pieces back here. That bearing just came loose and got sliding around in here. So I got to get, I got me a pick tool here. I got several about me, a pile of them. And I'm gonna see if I can't get some movement out of it. There it is, okay. Alright, let's see if I can't get these pieces out of here and we'll get them replaced. Okay, so first of all, on this side, I got my little 5 16 screw here. Let's see if I can't take this out and maybe I can get room and get those old pieces out of there. I may have to get me a screwdriver. Alright, so I just took my little picky tool here. Got that plucked out of the way. That was easy enough. Now I'm going to try to work those old broken plastic pieces because they're back in here somewhere. I'm going to try to work them up to the front and get them out of the way. Alright, so my first goal now is I need to get this. I got me a little 5-16 wrench. we got to get this little screw loose right here. Then this top bearing, if we refer to them as bearings, will slide out. Once we do that, we can lift this tube itself. We take a jack and lift the tube up. You lift this tube up, that will give us room to get these bearings out because they've got to be pushed up through these holes, pulled out. And then this, you got to slide another bearing on the other side that we'll have to replace too. Might as well do them all while we're doing it. So let me work on this. It's going to take a a little bit inch by inch getting that top screw out because it don't look not much room for a, a ratchet so it's just have to use a small wrench so as you can see I got the top screw out I had to take me a flat bladed screwdriver and uh, get a little pressure under it just pop it right out so now got that out we can try to get that that bottom bearing out out of the way with another pick tool so we can push this up. So let's try that. Alright, working with one hand here. 
give you an idea what I'm doing. I've got my little pick tool in here. And trying to pick this thing out. There we go. And there's shams. You need to count your shams. Let me if I got in there. I think, well, I think there might be another one in there. Yep. Two shams. All right. We've got two shams on that one. All right. Yeah, we are getting closer, aren't we? Now here's a good view of some bearing damage. See how badly it's broken out right here? Because the, the bulk of the weight comes out on these two front bearings. The rear ones seem to do okay. Because they're not handling the load like this front one is. So um, we're going to get this little pry bar right now. See if we can't push this over to get this bearing out. We'll see if that will work for us. Oh, I didn't explain something. This thing's giving me a little bit more trouble than I was expecting. I noticed when I got under here something wasn't right. Because this was adjusted all the way up as high as it would go. Should not be. Look at the other one over here in comparison. See, it's about a half inch below. So, even though I've got this jack here, had quite a bit of pressure on it. Trying to lift this ram up. You know, because you don't want to try to put jack under these boxes. This is just thin aluminum, lightweight stuff. It's, it's quite a bit of pressure, quite a bit of weight. So this sh is, should work for me, but it was not doing me no good. I put a lot of pressure on it, and, and, and I was not getting any lift. No weight was coming off these pieces. So what I started doing, because these nuts were all the way up, this piece of metal here was almost to the top. And you see... Well, it's not done it now. When I first started here, you can see the rubber was torn away where it was cocked up like this. So I'm trying to bring it back to the factory position. And by doing so, I'm starting to get some movement now. So if you if you run this, you're having problems with it. You got to loosen up this gusset. There's, there's two screws on each side. Then I'm pushing this down by pushing this down. You know, I'm, I'm pushing this down at the same time. This board, this jack, is pretty, preventing this from moving. And so by pushing it down, I'm creating a gap so I can hopefully get these little bearings out. So I'm going to continue working on these bolts. Hopefully I'll get enough clearance. You can even see this metal here is bent. Uh, some other pieces have been bent under here. It's, it's had a rough life. So let's, uh, let's get back to it. All right, you see I'm getting really close now. You see how that gap, this gap is beginning to close up because I'm slowly raising this outer inner tube up higher and higher and you see the gap I'm, I'm getting now so I'm getting really close to getting these little dudes out of there oh that one might just that one there may just about ready to come out I'm gonna give it a few more turns get a little more room well looky here folks they said it couldn't be done but we've got it pretty well see we got it all the way up in there nice and snug to the top and then let's look underneath here. You see the nice, nice gap I got now? I'll get the camera to see it. All right, so now we should be able to get those out a little easier. I'll find me some kind of tool. I got a screwdriver here. That one fell out. about sticking my finger in there. You know, always asking myself how many ways can this go wrong. It may help if I get two fingers. Alright, here's the other one. Getting it out. See how, how badly broken up it is. Alright. Yeah, I'm going to have to get two hands. I'm going to have to give me a little hammer. Give a little love tap. Get these pieces out and then save those shims so we go back with the same Keep it the same dimensions. All right, I think I got them loose now. Let's see if we, what we'll find out, what, what we'll look like. All right, there's one. Get that out. And we got the other one. All right, so I got those shams. I'll 
Looks like we've got three or four shams. I'll have to count them here in a second. Lay them out the way I've got found them. All broken up. Remember, I gotta get those that other piece out. Remember? Uh, yeah, those pieces there. So, let's see if I can use my little pick tool to get them out of there. Yeah, one shim. Oh, it's getting a little tight. May have to pry on this a little bit to get me some more space. I got me a little pry bar here somewhere. All right, let me try to get that out of there. All right, so I was giving me trouble getting that out, so I found me a technique. Got me this little pry bar here. So I've got it positioned in there. Kind of do this one hand up. Oh, so it's always a problem. All right, so I'm just gonna add a little bit of, I'm just gonna press down on it. Add a little pressure, that'll open that up just enough to get the tension off of it. So I got the old one out, and it only has one shim, it looks to be. No, wait a minute. It has two shims. Let me just inspect. I don't see no more up there. All right, and let's see what else we can get into. All right, what we've just done is loosen up these two nuts here, and we're going to try to move this box over a little bit. <coughs> and move it. Okay, what if you've got between here and here, this little spot we got, can you put, yeah, get my finger out of the way. <laughs> is it moving? We may have to get the weight off this jack. No, it just moved as far as it's going to go. Is it, I mean, is it, oh, is it to go right on the thread here. Oh, well, so the bolts got to come out. Yes. All right, well, let me just get these bolts completely out. Let's see if we can't move this farther. What are you doing? Looks like we're. Right. Not quite halfway there. Uh, more. Oh yeah. Okay, we got about a half inch out on. Okay, you want more? If you can. Okay, looking good over here now. I got a pretty good gap. All right, now look at kind of the gap we got over here. Oh yeah, well, maybe what well, maybe we got enough to get it out now. Let's see. Let me, let me getting close. How close are we? Hey, get out of my way. Alright. So I'm going to push. Right, we got to go a little bit more. A little more? Yep. I don't know if we can get any more or not. It's going to be pretty close. Alright. Hallelujah. We got it out. See there? I use this nice pry bar. Put a little pressure on it. That's all it took. Just a little bit more. And then I took a screwdriver and gave it a little, little tap. And it came out. Uh, now it's bound again. So I got to get two fingers. I'm going to apply pressure and pull this plastic piece out. Okay, we've discovered a problem we need to address. See this big gouge in this thing here? <clears throat> focus, focus. Here, there it is. And what's happening is this bolt has got a sharp lip on it. So we got to try to tighten it up, grind it down. We've got to get creative. We've got to get something done with it. Because it's just going to eat up the, the new bearing we put in it. And you can see it, this even has a little bit of a dent to it. If you can see it or not. It's dished in. Don't know how that happened. But but it has after 20 plus years of going in and out. So we're getting closer. Now we start getting our new parts. And reversing our this procedure. Okay, going to try to get you some video from this end. You can kind of see what we've done. See, we've got that nice big gap now. Nice big gap that we got that last piece out. You see it's we got the, the ram box all the way up high at the top. And it's all the way over on this side. And you can see from out here to get to this point, we had to loosen these up and really shove this over quite a bit. But we'd made markings with a magic marker, magic marker on the back side to put everything back in place. So now, I think we're ready to start putting in those new bearings. Okay, well, <clears throat> this is the first time I'm doing this, so I'm just kind of winging it as I go. So anyway, putting it just like back the way I found it, we got one bearing, side, side bearing block, whatever you want to call it. We got three shims. So I've already got that in place here. You can just see the little white nubs. So it's getting tricky. I kept trying to put it in, it kept wanting to drop and give me a pain. So well, how can I do this to help? 
hold it because I want to video this and show it at the same time. So I took me a spare one of these and bent it to make just a little bit of spring pressure. So you see I've shoved it behind it. So that, that keeps it held in place. So I'm hoping I can just push this over and it'll line up with those holes. We'll see if I get lucky. I don't know. You can see it's moving. Ooh. Got one lined up. Oh, no, that one came on the line with my scratchy tool or screwdriver. Okay. I got one. The one is at the end at the top. The bottom one is really close. I'm going to have to get two. two hands on this, but you get the idea. I think I'm going to get my little screwdriver and put it in here and add a little more pressure. See if we can get them popped in there. Alright, you can see I kind of got it in place. Pretty dang close. Now we're going to try to add a little bit of pressure to it. I swear these little plastic yes. pieces. My end's moving, whether your end is popped yet or not. Yeah, my end is not in place yet. I'm going to add a little bit more. Let me get a little screwdriver behind there and nudge it. Okay, so we got it all in nice and tight. One thing my buddy's prying from that end, he's prying it this way. That's helping. Another thing I did is the last part, you're using this great pry bar here, putting it like this, and applying direct pressure to it, and getting up here, and doing that again. So that, be careful. that that push it over, but you gotta be careful. You want to get up here at the top edge, and the top, the bottom edge or top edge when you push over. You don't want to be pushing this area here. You want to keep that smooth, and that's the thin part too. You could possibly bend it, so you want to be careful with that. So now we got that. So what now we gotta do is get our shims and get our two bottom bearings in place. Uh, I'll lower it, get the top bearings, and I guess this one will be no, the last. Should. All right, now I figure this is a good idea. Just do a dry run, make sure they do line up and they drop down in the holes like they're supposed to. That dropped in there nice, easy peasy. Get it back out. Get out there. And do the same over here. Make sure it lines up before you start fighting with those shims and stuff. Because sometimes you get rust and stuff in those holes. Okay. So it's going in there all the way like it's supposed to. All right, so now I'll just get this out, get my shims in place. It's going to take, um, let's see, let's, oh, what do I take out of it? Yep, three and three. It's got my new pile of shims. Should we get one? One, two, three. Working one handed. All right. One, two, three. Oh, and I didn't mention that what we're working on this kit here. This is the HWH part number RAP91975. This is the kit we're installing. It's good for a couple different styles of HWH. Uh, in fact, this, what, what is this, George? A 2003? Yeah, this is a three, but it looks like it covers like okay. four different styles. Okay, but the RV is a 2003. Was it an adventure? Yes, 35U. Winnebago Adventure 35U. That's the, this is the one we're working on. You know, that this is just the one that just goes out straight and back in. Uh, where uh, our RV comes out and drops down. It's got the Stormore level floor, I think. This this you know this is a little bit simpler design. The Stormore level floor. That extra mechanism gets a little more complicated. But you know they're all complicated. But anyway, we're doing the best we can. All right, we got shims here. And let's see if we can get these in here with a little one-handed camera work. All right, we got that one in place. And that was even left-handed even, imagine that. one arm cameraman. All right, all right. Okay, bottom bearings are in place. Okay, so at this point, I think we're ready to lower that jack, aren't we? We should be. Alright. Lower the jack and see how that looks.
Oh, I can't. Okay. All right, here we go. Easy does it. There we go. All right, perfect. I hear water. Okay, we're off. We must be tilting. All right. Now we got the top and the side to do. Let's try to see if we can get that done. Okay. See what we're doing? We said we got that pry bar. Now we're prying it the opposite direction. We're going this way so we can get more access for to get the shims and the bearing on here. All right. Now at this point, can you jack up the, the jack again to add pressure to it so it stays put? And then we'll work on getting our proper shims and getting that screw and stuff in there. Well, it'll, it should hold. It should hold. Okay. Um, All right. Let's, once we... let's get our shims. Okay. It took a few minutes, but I got it lined up. Show you how I did it. Take these. Remember, these go only going one way. You see how it's rounded? So you want the rounded, the flat edge goes to, with the shims because the rounded edge you want to slide against here. So I just took it and because we kind of got the it positioned just right so it created just a little bit of friction so I could get it started and just slowly tapped it in there tapped it in with a blank one of these I just tapped it in place once I got really close then I took me an extension here and kind of got got these holes lined up I did notice something odd in this kit uh, nowhere in this kit is there a piece like this this is the old one I took out because this is the single one that, that locks it in place I uh, don't know why that is, but that's just the way it is. There's, there's nothing in this kit that has one like that. Um, well, yeah, no, there's not. So anyway, I'm gonna, I'm gonna use this. It, I mean, it's nothing. It doesn't really touch or do anything much, but, but lock it in place. So, uh, so what I'm going to do next, and then all we, all we have left is a top piece. So let me give that a little love tap. All right. Little love tap here. All right, that. And we got a screw and a lock washer here somewhere. Let me find my lock washer. Oh, there it is. All right. Screw and lock washer. This is 5 sixteenths. Get that there. And you want to make sure you use the right size. You could use too long of a screw dig into your pipe there so all right let me snug that up got me a little t-wrench here it's just right for something like this don't have to get crazy just snug it up good all right now i think we're ready to lower this and just put our top bearing in and we'll just about be ready to call it a night all right lower the jack to put in the top ready? bearing i'm ready bring her down there we go a little bit over here uh-huh still looks we like we want to get our bolts in uh it needs to go down more yeah i can't get because i can't get that bearing into this all the way down oh there we go all right we're okay. all the way down we lifted off completely perfect okay now see if we can't get that top bearing in position okay so we lowered the jack all the way all the way down that gave us a nice big gap right here so we're going to slowly slide this into place and all right now i got to, to try to feel for it I may get me a socket maybe that might be a good trick get me a small socket just fit down in that hole make sure it's lined up good all right i'm gonna try to explain how i did this because i wanted to be i wanted to be sure it didn't go too far if i shoved it too far and missed all souls that's gonna be a pain every direct to drag it back so as I got close to line up with those big holes, I started up with a, with a very small socket, just so I could get it, feel it. I right, got that one, then I went to like a five, what, a five sixteenths, and I kind of got it in there, wiggled around, kept skip till I got it centered, and then maybe what I get up to, maybe five sixteenths was the largest one. Yeah, I think five sixteenths did it. Once I got to a five sixteenths, I just kind of wiggled around, made sure I was all centered and then I got my little plastic block here and we'll put it in place well 
I'm off just a little bit for some reason. I may have knocked it back out of alignment. I showed you how I got that lined up. But once again, I have to use one of my old pieces. Because you know you don't have room, you might think you use one of these big pieces, but it won't work in this application because you got a piece of weld back here in the way. But this little piece here, the old one's just fine. So here it goes. Alright. It's in place. I just gotta put the screw and lock washer. And we'll have that part done. Now we just we'll have to concentrate on getting all those screws back in place. So let me get a screw in there. It takes this takes a little while because you got a little five sixteenths. You got to use a wrench. It takes a ratchet wrench would be handy right here. Okay, last step is done. That is snugged up. Now you see we made some marks here. Got to try to get that back in position and get those two bolts tightened back up. And then we'll have to do some adjustment here. We got to get that back in place. Actually, I'll probably need to do that right now before we. Because it's just, from the factory, it looks like it's about a half inch down, according to the other side. And then we'll have to do some fine tuning, I think, with the end piece to get the paint lines to line up. So, we're getting closer. Okay, so you can see what's happening here. We tighten this up. And as we do, we're closing up the gap on the end. Put, putting everything back uh, the way we found it. That's why you want to make your marks. Okay, so now we've got this tightened back up. We lined our marks up. Now our goal is to adjust this piece up a little bit to match, have it match the other side, and then we'll have to fine tune it after we get the room closed up. So as you can see, this is the forward ram. See how much space we have here? Let's go to the rear. And it is all the way down. Also, you'll see that the room, this part here, uh, one of these parts. Which one is it? Yeah, this part here has been crashing into the belt line, I think it's called. So we need to get this raised up. And we'll have to do some fine tuning and get our paint lines back in order. Alright, you see with a quarter inch Allen wrench. Every time we turn it, you get a little more height. And of course, before you do that, there is a three quarter inch nut you gotta loosen first. Three quarter inch jam nut. Right so, uh, once we get our adjustment where we want it, then we can lock it back in place. So, a few more turns and we we'll, should be where we need to be. Okay, so here's this bolt. We need to grind a little bit off of that. So if you can see, we got plenty of depth of Allen wrench, it won't be a problem, but if we don't, due to wear or whatever reason that's just going to dig into that that new bearing and just tear up jack so i put a 9 16 nut on there got it good and gr uh, tight don't have a surface grinder but we got a poor man's version which just is a grinding wheel lay it here on the side we'll do that for a few minutes see if we can't take about 10 or 15 thousandths off and then get a nice smooth transaction on this ram So we got done grinding both screws and now you can run a straight edge nice and smooth before it was hanging on those screws really bad see this other one over here you just pass right by if it'll focus focus there you go we're just there yeah there it is goes right over it I see like imagine here's a, a sliding piece this is what you'll be doing you need a nice smooth area one thing I noticed that I don't like, there's some weld spatter over here. A little, little bit, see these little pieces of weld where it's dug onto it. You know, it's gonna, you can see how it kind of hooks on the plastic. I'm sure it's gonna gouge up the plastic too. It's always something. I don't think I sh was showing a shot of the jack how we had it laid out, but that's what we did. 
we just used a two bait that we had laying here. I don't know, what is that, two and a half feet long, thereabouts. That worked out pretty well. First, we started out here on the end, but it was kind of wonky because it's coming up at an angle. It's worked a lot better taking it right back to the back so we could jack straight up instead of trying to push on the angle. And then also, it worked good. It kept this area open for us so we can manipulate this piece. So, that worked out pretty well. All right, test one, we're taking it in. A lot of water coming out. So far, so good. It's soaking me. Oh, it is. Looks good, sounds good. No bad creaking. Like we're going in pretty even. Look, so far it looks okay, I can tell. See how our paint lines look when we get, get closer in. Mm -hmm. By the way, we're doing this at midnight. Getting close. Can we see how it lines up with the with the paint lines? Right, let's slow down. Let's see how. No, I'm two inches in the front, and I mean in the bottom, and an inch on the top. That's about right. You want tilt. You want the top to hit first, then the bottom to close up. But it looks like we may have to raise it up some more. But Bumping in about another inch. We'll see what it looks like here. I'm looking really good right here. All right, I think we're going to have to go up a little higher. One, one more bump. Yeah, we're still quite, quite low. Yeah, I can tell it. So we don't want to go in no more. Yeah, we're going to come in. We need to come up. Gosh, a good half, good half inch. All right, so we're going to have to do some, some adjusting before we go in any further. All right, we're making a difference. We're raising it up here. Getting pretty close now. A little bit more. Is that right there? Okay. Yeah, that might. I think we're gonna clear it now. Reminder before you make adjustment, we're going to bump it back out about an inch, get the pressure off the wall. You good? Yeah, we're good. Now we're going to raise it up another quarter inch or so and then close it up again. Okay, I think we're getting right on the main now, but point note, note this see how the rubber's compressed? It's not compressed on the other side, so we've got to do some adjusting. So this is what see it right here. We're all the way in, but we still have a gap. So we, we got to adjust our stop bolt. So this will come in and compress the rubber. But I think we got our lines in good shape now. Let's get down here and look at it. Yeah, that looks good. Like it, like it. Okay, it's good. Okay, yeah, all right, good, all right. So here's the stop bolt. Probably moves. So this is the stop bolt. When it comes back here, it stops. Yeah. So we're gonna turn it in, jam, jam those nuts back, and then see, test it again. I'm hitting right now. Okay, we're not hitting yet. We're getting close. See, a little more. A little more. Okay. Doesn't look to me like it's moving. Okay, we're just. Let me see if we've. Okay, we bottomed that. We need to come out just a little bit more on that bolt. So we'll take it back out toward me. All right. Let me unscrew this back nut. Okay, take it back in. Okay, okay, we are just now compressing the rubber. I think we're in good. We've touched it. I think we're in good shape because we don't want to break a flange off. We just we just compressed no, the rubber. No, we want to just touch the flange. We're just, we just don't want to go right. All right, so now we got where we want it. We'll jam this. We'll jam this nut up here. Get that good and tight. 
Okay, now I think we're ready for some. Maybe we need to do a full stroke all the way out, all the way in. Alright, all the way out. Everything That's looks it. everything looks good. Alright, let's do a full stroke back in. What do you think? Close them up. Alright, one more all the way in. We'll see how everything you looks. Sprayed those see. rails? Yeah, I did. Okay. And we sprayed those rails with that uh, dry lube. Everything looks nice in there. All those nice new parts. Alright. Alright, I'm ready. Clear. Clear? Clear. We're still good. How are we looking in our in the box? So we're just checking our spacing here. So we've got a finger there. Let's go to the other side. Yep. Got a little more than the fingers, that's about right. We're looking good. Okay. All right. Look at those paint lines now. Sweet. Okay, top's in. Yep, top is touching. Bottom's coming in. Oh, Bottom's sweet. In. My goodness. Not bad for a couple amateurs. Not bad at all. Actually, this can come looking down. Looking good, a bit. looking good. It can come down a little bit, about half as much as I brought it up. Alright, yeah, we might we might adjust out of sm smudging. Yeah, I was just looking a smudge. at I was looking at these. Okay, the just a tip: don't stay focused on the on the belt line because those can sometimes be a little off anyway. It's just stay focused on your original paint lines. That's what's important. You get those right, you should be correct in the box. All right, we're gonna bring it all the way back out and make a final adjustment on, on the things we took loose on those uh, adjustment bolts. We need to jam up those uh, Allen screws so everything stays put. Now that we got it, we will want it. I just want to clarify how this little mechanism works and how we were using it last night. Um, because you, down underneath here, you see you've got, you got this locking nut that locks everything in place once you get adjusted. Because the first time you make any adjustments, you need to break it free. So I'll go, let's just, we thought, well, let's just unscrew the nut, nut completely, get it out of our way, because we knew it was going to have a lot of adjustments to do. But it didn't come out. It went down almost to the end here, and I guess there's enough rust and stuff on the threads, it stopped. So it kind of made it handy because that way you, we could use the leverage of the ratchet. We could we could quickly, every time we took a bite, going counterclockwise, looking from underneath, it would raise it up. So that worked nice and quick. But then we're at the point we now have to get the locking nut back in place. So now we have to go clockwise with the nut and hold the Allen wrench at the same time. Now, if you got the right kind of wrench, I mean, this is most people are going to have wrenches like this. You can kind of hold this in here, and I'm going to get my own wrench. All right, so you you can get a wrench in there like this, kind of at, at an angle, and that and hold the Allen wrench, and that way you can break the nut free and get it back tightened up and jammed in position. Another wrench, which is actually better to have one, is one like this, because it fits right up in that little pocket, and you get a, get a really good bite on it. To get, so you could use this wrench. Hold, hold the Allen screw, hold the Allen screw so you don't lose your adjustment and then tighten up the nut till it gets jammed again so everything stays put. So that's what I'm going to do next. I'm just going to hold this wrench, make a lot of noise, tighten up this nut by turning it 
clockwise looking from underneath and that'll jam it in position and we'll have this adjustment locked in we don't, have to, don't have to worry about it moving in moving on us and be sure to remember once you get all your final adjustments made make sure these are jammed tight on both sides and make sure you tighten up your gussets here that's what i'm doing right now and uh, we'll take it in and out a couple more times and make sure we're good to go all right well i'm about ready to crawl out of here for the last time but i was just going to point out a few things we have no idea what its life was like before but it had a rough life you look at this look at this big chunk of metal here where it's, where it's been dragged it's been metal on metal like and, what that is. and then it's got this big ding here it's dished in because we had to grind those screws to get that good and smooth we've got that piece of metal's bent this has been up and you see so that's that's took a ding so something's really got crazy in the past so that's why maybe it took a little extra work to get everything fine-tuned but we got it all dialed in now and it's working nice and smooth and so all right We'll crawl out here one last time. Everything's all good and tight. We're going to bring it in and out a few times just to confirm. Clear. So it's the next day. We're going to do it. Yeah, it's clear. We're going to bring it back in and out. Now we've got some good daylight instead of working in the dark. See, the floor is nice and level. So far, so good. No scary sounds. Remember how we was checking the, the bulb seal last night? Nice. You come in at the top first. Right. Just See, right. I thought I'd point this out to you. On some HWH systems where they got two rams involved, one ram will have four bearings all the way around, and then the other ram will only have two. So here's an example. So you got the bearings on the bottom, you got the bearing on the top. No bearings on either side. So don't think that they're missing, that's just the way it's designed. Of course, we go up here to the one we just thought they'd be doing. You see we got bearings all the way around. So don't think you've got side bearings missing just because you don't see them. You don't, well, I guess as long as one has them, I guess that's enough for HWH. That's what I think. Alright, once again, the lines are where we want them to be. I think we've, I've told you about all I know. It's the first time I've done one of these, but it went pretty smooth, even though we had some hiccups to deal with and overcome. But we overcame. So thanks for watching. Have a blessed day. We'll see you later. Bye.